Hey, this is Malcolm Andreation, and this is a quick tutorial on how to use the new 3D Cut and Sew tool in Maya 2018. In my opinion, this is probably the fastest way to unwrap UVs in Maya, and uh, I think it's a pretty cool step forward uh, just in that general workflow. So uh, let's just jump right in and check it out. So here you can see I've got uh, just a basic shape to uh, illustrate how the tool works. And then I'm going to show you an advanced workflow that I developed, which I think is uh, uh, quite a bit more powerful than what it standardly ships with in Maya. So uh, I've got this kind of thing here. Um, it has some UV shells on it already. I'm going to turn on the checkerboard just so we can see uh, texel density. And I'm going to lower the dimming so you can still see the uh, UV border edges. Um, so this is just the default UVs that came with the object as I extruded or whatever. So I'm just going to get rid of those right away with just a camera based planar projection. Um, so you can see we have no UV border edges. Nothing's highlighted here. It's all smeared and welded together. And then I'm going to show you how the tool works. So you can get to the new tool. Uh, it's only available in 2018, not in 2017. Uh, you go up to the UV menu and right at the bottom here, the 3D Cut and Sew tool. And you just click it to enter the tool. Uh, it turns purple, which I'll discuss in a second. Uh, I just made a button for myself here just for easier access. Um, so from here, basically the principle of the tool is it works very similar to the workflow that people might be used to from 3D Coat, uh, which in my opinion is actually the easiest and fastest way to unwrap UVs. So I'm super excited that this workflow is now available in Maya. So what you do is you just mark up border edges and then you press D on the keyboard, which is the hotkey for this tool to unfold that mesh. Um, people that are familiar with uh, the road cool, uh, roadkill tool from like the 80s or whenever people used to use that will be super hyped to, to see this workflow built in directly into the Maya interface. Um, so you'd mark up a border edge like you normally would. You could double click and you can see as soon as I double click, it's already cut the shell. So saving a bunch of time there. Um, you can also hold down tab and it will highlight, it'll pre-select highlight that entire face. So you don't even have to bother doing the double click. So if you wanted to put a shell there and just click and boom, you've got your cut just like that. Or you could double click and then you've got your cut. Um, for areas down here at the bottom, which is not contiguous, um, basically in Maya, anyone who's been using Maya for more than a couple months is probably aware that double clicking an edge up here just selects the edge loop but double clicking down here because it's an end gone I guess it won't actually select it so when I double click nothing happens I can't get to it so uh, in the in the 3d cut and sew tool basically what you do is you click and you drag and that'll actually cut it around the edge it's a little slow but it's still better than having to go into and convert your uh, selection to contiguous edges so there boom I've got another shell um, and so the really magical part about this whole tool is uh, it's non-destructive. So as I'm cutting these things, uh, I'm looking here and I'm seeing the shells or whatever. But uh, as I'm cutting these things, if I make a mistake or I change my mind, I can hold control and then I can actually get rid of the cut and boom, it's gone. So I'm just going to get rid of these because they're kind of useless. Uh, so let's pretend I wanted to cut it here um, and here. Uh, I should mention... As you do the cuts, uh, because the tool has the UV shell coloring turned on, which is a feature of 2017 and 2018, it's super handy because you can actually visualize the shells as you make them. So you can kind of pre-visualize. Like I almost never look over here anymore. I mostly spend my time here. So you can see that's going to be a shell. That's going to be a shell. That's going to be a shell, 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 shell. And I don't know, for fun, let's just like put another shell up top with the drag tool. You can see, boom, then it changed color again. Um, so if you're an expert in doing UVs or just been doing it for a little while, you, you know that some of this stuff is going to unwrap fine because it's a circle, so you're going to get donut shape. Um, but this stuff here might unwrap to be a circle potentially, uh, but you might actually want it to unwrap into like a square line shape. So we're going to have to pick a border edge, so I'm just going to choose some random border edge. So just double click that um, and double click that. And I didn't actually want this. To become a border edge and the reason that that happened is because it double clicked and it found the edge loop or whatever so you can hold control and click to get rid of that 
but what I should have actually done here, I'll get rid of it on that one too. What I should have actually done is you can highlight the edge without double clicking. And if you press X on the keyboard, that's the same as uh, cutting it. Uh, so again, another hotkey. Um, so this looks like pretty promising. Um, and so unlike 3D Coat, in 3D Coat, this workflow is exactly the same. But in 3D Coat, as you click the shells, basically what will happen is every time a new shell is created, it will automatically unwrap right here. And you'll see the preview of the like unfolded mesh which is super powerful because it took me like seconds to do these cuts and boom, it's unwrapped. So Maya doesn't work that way. Uh, so I'll show you the default behavior and then I'll show you a little button that I made myself, uh, which kind of hacks it and like overrides it and actually makes it just like 3D coat, which is uh, way faster than using the Maya standard workflow. So I've got my shells laid out here. So if you right click and you go to components and then convert, uh, not really convert, this is a special menu because you're in the tool. Um, go to UV shell, and then you you can highlight the UV shells. And so any UV shell that you have highlighted, so you click it to select it, and you press D on the keyboard, which is a hotkey. And if you watch over here, as I press D, boom, it's unfolded. I'm going to grab this guy, boom, D again. And then I'm going to grab this guy, and do D again. And then like this guy, and this guy, and oh, bottom guy, I missed that guy. Boom. And so you've got... Uh, a great uh, UV, I wouldn't say a great UV layout, you have a great unwrap uh, in a matter of seconds instead of having to kind of fiddle with doing all this stuff here and rotating, aligning edges, doing a bunch of work, applying planar projections, cutting, moving, sewing, all that stuff. Um, you can do it in a matter of seconds with the new tool in my 2018. But like I said, the downside is you've got to go into UV shell mode and press D, which is cool like as a hotkey or whatever, but this is not as good as 3D coat and it's also still too slow for me. So it's like they implemented this magical workflow and then got it just like 10% wrong where it's not really any faster than what you could kind of do by hand. Um, Cause you could always just mark up these edges with cut edge and then like unfold each shell manually or whatever. And I'm gonna show you the problem with that right now. So um, first of all, to get back to cutting and sewing, you have to right click and go to component and go back to edge. So maybe I'm not happy uh, with this guy, let's say this guy being unfolded um, vertically like this. Let's just pretend because you probably want that. So I'm gonna control click and add those back together. You're gonna see it's welded and the UVs are all messed up. So then just to re-unfold that, I have to go back to component and then go back to UV edge shell, go back to this, hit D and boom. And that's cool, great, I got my unwrap and um, it's all fine, uh, but that's too much work to have to go back into this menu every time just to test out new, new UV layouts in here. I can cut it again, and if I want to go back and try it again, I have to go back here and hit D just to see the result. So like I said, in 3D Coat, oops, I don't know what it is. Uh, like I said, in 3D Coat, um, that's all done automatically for you. So uh, what I've done is I tried to hack it because I, I got this last night, and I was super excited about Oh man, this is going to be awesome. Fucking, they got the 3D coat stuff. I never have to do UVs again. I can just like click edges and double click edges and it's just going to be magic. And then I tried it and I was like, oh man, the workout is like, it's like 90% there, but it's just missing like that auto unwrap feature. Um, so I'm going to show you how I hacked it by just creating a little simple shelf button. Uh, and we'll get into that right now. So I'm going to explain what the button does, and then maybe it's not going to make sense, and then I'll just run that same workflow that I just did a couple times, and you can see how uh, fast it is and how um, easy it is to do UVs now and how kind of enjoyable it is. It almost feels like you're cheating when you're doing your unwrap. Um, so that's my shelf button up there. I just call it unwrap. Uh, so first, I'm going to exit this. Get out of this model here. I'm just going to put the camera planar projection back through it just so we have a fresh slate to start from. And uh, so what I needed to do is figure out how to um, do a cut and then kind of on command, like do the unfold, do a cut, do the unfold without having to switch back and forth between like component selections and select one UV shell at a time or whatever. So I created myself a button that basically... Uh, selects all the UV shells, it runs the un Unfold 3D on it, um, it orients all the shells, um, and then it runs the Unfold 3D's 
layout uh, UVs feature uh, to get the texel density uniform across the mesh. Uh, then I do a legacy layout UVs to pack everything so they're not overlapping. Uh, the reason that I have to use the legacy uh, layout UVs is because the new Unfold 3D layout UVs is super slow when you turn on packing. And I'll show you why that's important in a second. Uh, and then after all that's done, I switch back to edge mode. So from the user's perspective, they just hit one button and uh, their new layout just appears uh, in the UV editor like it would in 3D code. Uh, so let's walk through that now. Okay, so the first thing that I've got to do uh, is enter the tool. So I'll just use my shelf button that I made. Enter the tool, same as before. Uh, and then I'll mark up some UV shells like I did before. Get those guys. Do this again. I don't know why it's quite satisfying. Drag selecting these to the cut. And uh, I'll do this guy. Let's pretend. And then I want this to uh, get unwrap got unwrapped into a square. So I'll single click, select it, and press X, which is the hotkey. And I'll do the same for this guy. Shift select that I can press X, which is the hotkey. Um, so the magic comes in now. I don't have to exit the tool and like do that other weird workflow. I just click this button once and boom, we've got perfect UVs in one click and it took one or two seconds. And so that's why it's important that I needed to use the legacy UV layout to pack these rather than the unfold 3D layout because the unfold 3D layout is way better and it'll pack them uh, in way better and it'll space them as the shells out correctly in pixel density. Sorry, pixel space. Um, but it's super slow. It'll take like, it's not like super slow like minutes. It's super slow like it'll take like 5 to 10 seconds. And really what you want to do is iterate here in real time and try out different ideas and just kind of see it uh, update constantly. Um, so for example, let's say that I wanted to also cut this guy out. So I'm just going to double click him. He's cut out. And I can click this button here again. And boom, got a separate shell and it's spaced out, right? So you can super fast, like do your mechanical model, whatever your organic model, and just keep like laying it out and seeing it on the fly. Now, the best part about this is um, you might not want to go up here and click the button. That's a pretty good workflow, but uh, it actually supports the G key to repeat last command. So um, I didn't actually want to do that. That's like a pretty crappy UV layout. So I'm going to hold control and add it back in. And you'll see it's all screwed up now so I'm just going to press G boom sewn back together it's spaced out it's laid out um, and the texel density uh, is the same across all the shells so you'll notice like as I'm doing this in real time uh, it's also keeping all the texel density the same so you don't have to like oh I need to go in here and like scale stuff and rotate rotate stuff or use the nightshade interface to like lay out the UVs and get the texel density or whatever everything that you do here is just going to get updated every time you press G uh, and magically kind of be the best kind of simple layout that you can do or simple unwrap that you can do. So the idea is not to have this as your final UV layout because um, that would be terrible. Uh, the idea is to speed up the unwrapping part, which is super, uh, can be super time consuming and tedious uh, depending on your mesh and kind of uh, not have to actually really worry about what direction of planar projected or anything or what the shape is going to be just like mark up your border edges uh, press the button once and then just press g to iterate and then see it kind of update on the fly as you're working and make decisions that way then when you're finished with all that and you've got all your shells unwrapped which should take a significantly less amount of time than previous versions of maya once you've done that then i would still recommend going in and tweaking things maybe using the gridify tool from nightshade on certain shells or laying out stuff or rotating the stuff that you want it uh, to pack into your um, uv layout i wouldn't recommend this as like do this and then magically your uvs are perfect or whatever you might want to stack shells or something like that or just move them or rotate them i don't really like my shells ending on edges like that so i might go into all my thing all my circular shells when i'm done and just align to the, the middle edge or whatever um, so let's look at a couple, just kind of like do some work and kind of see how fast it is, right? So like, let's say I wanted to cut this guy off. Oops. So same thing, I'll drag around. 
to cut it off and then G. Boom. Done. It's just like zero seconds. And hey, I changed my mind. I don't actually want to drag that guy off. So drag around to get it back in. And the text density is all screwed up and it's all broken or whatever. Boom. G. Done. It's back back to normal. It's reintegrated um, or whatever. Um, and maybe you want to try, like, maybe you don't want to project this like this uh, into a donut and you actually want to try uh, putting it into a square. And same thing, just quickly press G, boom. Now you can see there, that's not ideal, but I mean, that is kind of a limitation of uh, Unfold 3D. That's the best it could do with that particular shape. Uh, so that's why I recommend this workflow is for quickly laying out your UVs, getting all your, oh, sorry, not laying out your UVs, getting all your shells uh, separated without having to use like a bunch of tedious uh, planar maps or other techniques or even using the UV editor interface because uh, that's still slower. Basically, the selection time you spend in here converting selections and using the marking menu and switching to different tools, you can do it way faster by just marking it up here and pressing G. And even if you get something shitty like this, there's a couple options. You could always try uh, cutting this as well and then pressing G again. That gives you two half donuts, so it's not helpful. So this is actually a good case because I can kind of in real time like actually sew it back together and see what it looks like. So maybe uh, you're happy with that because you don't want to spend the extra time. But if you really wanted to get, let's try it over here and see if it has any effect. If you really wanted to get this, um, that's where I'd be like, cool, I've got my shell and that took two seconds now when I'm done getting all my shells then I then I move into UV layout workflow where I go in and I would gridify that or whatever um, the thing about my script is or button whatever you want to call it it's not really a script because I didn't write any code to do it um, the thing about that is you want uh, sorry not you want to um, it because it relays out the UVs and gets the texel density and repacks and re-rotates uh, everything, what you don't want to do is you don't want to do a cut and see this and then go and try to fix it. Because it, let's say that you, uh, oops, wrong tool there. Let's say that you went into the shell or whatever and you did the straighten UVs and cool, whatever. Let's just pretend that that was good or whatever. So you're like, cool, I fixed that or whatever. What you'll see is uh, after you've done any more work on it and you press the button again it's going to go back to this and the reason that it's doing that is because basically for my workflow I've made the script so it doesn't unfold 3d on all the shells at once because what you should be worried about right now is quickly unwrapping your mesh and then once you're done unwrapping it then move on to the layout phase um, so I won't include this script uh, for you guys unless you want it because I figured like people might want this, whatever happens here, they might want to customize it to their workflow. Maybe they don't want to do a rotation. Maybe they don't want to align um, UV edges or whatever. Uh, maybe they want to use a legacy unfold or something like that. Um, but if somebody wants a script, uh, just let me know in the comment and I'll be happy to post it. It's just pretty basic. Um, copy paste of the history into the script editor or whatever. So you guys can kind of do whatever you want here uh, when you when you press G basically. But t for me, this was the closest to 3D coat, and uh, in my opinion, it's the probably the fastest way to to quickly unwrap the shapes and then just do a little bit of cleanup later. Um, so yeah, so we can like select that guy, press G, it's separated. We could even like let's cut this. Donut out, G, boom. Can't cut that out because it's got the top on it. Let's do that guy as well. And G that. Yeah, cool. So you got two donut. Um, let's take the other half of that just for fun. Unfold that. So you can see, like, it's super powerful to quickly get all the shapes that you care about or the shells that you care about, and then you can fine tune your shape stuff after that. So in my opinion, this is probably the best kind of way to to workflow like low poly mechanical models or even high poly mechanical models. Uh, so it's pretty exciting. Uh, so thanks for watching the video and uh, have a good day.